Okay, so SolidWorks more tools. We are opening the file. It will be a step file. We're gonna see since it's a step file, uh, the software will wanna run a, a import diagnostic. I'm gonna click on, on no for this. This will be the the case study part. So um, it's, it's uh, the half of a reciprocating saw. So it's made from uh, from plastic. This is why it's perfect as a case study for mold tools. So I'm gonna go up to the top. I'm gonna put shaded with edges. I'm gonna go to evaluate. And using the measurement, I'm gonna measure the part from that surface all the way to the back surface. So we see that uh, that the value on the x-axis will have this value. I'm gonna copy that with Ctrl C. And now using the scale tool within mold tools, I'm gonna define a scaling factor for the part. So in order to, to reach the desired uh, dimension, in this case I want to reach uh, up to 450 millimeters for the part. So I'm going to put that value and I'm going to divide that with the copied value. And if I'm going to press on tab key, I'm going to see that the scale parameter for this uh, will have this value, so 0 0.19. And I'm going to check that, that mark. And I see that SOLIDWORKS has made the, the part smaller. Now I will zoom in toward, toward the part using the, the mouse wheel. And again, if I'm going to measure the same part, so on the x uh, axis, I'm going to see that this will be the, the value. Now, depending on the, the type of material, there will be a, a certain uh, shrinkage of the part. So usually it's important to scale the part like uh, one uh, up to even 2%, depending on the, the plastic type. So keep this in mind, um, and you can check uh, check for those uh, shrinkage value, values on uh, various websites, depending on uh, the chosen material. For this case, uh, I will not uh, rescale the part. So then we're going to proceed to the following part, will be the mold tools. I'm going to go and define the parting line. So I'm going to check that the origin is positioned within the, the parts over there. And I'm going to click on the parting line and I will want to define the, um, the direction of pull to be the top lane. And the draft analysis for this case study part will be one degree. I'm going to hit on draft analysis. And we're going to see that we're going to have the positive with, uh, with green. So that will be the top, top of the part. And the bottom with red um, will be the negative. We're going to click on OK. Now with the parting line defined, we can go up to shot of surface. And within shot of surface, we're going to have to, to close our uh, open surface. If you're also going to have this loop redundant, you can just uh, right click, clear selection. After that, if you're going to click again on shot of surface, the software will usually uh, recalculate this. Uh, let's see if it will be capable to automatic, automatically select those. Shot of surface, I will hit um, and do it again. If not, I'm just going to do the selection, but uh, usually uh, the software can, uh, can select this. If not, the shot of surface will be this section uh, with the whole loop, the following one, again the following one. After that we're going to have this surface that needs to be closed. And we're going to have just one of the pins has uh, a cutout at the, at the end. So we see that all these pins are filled with material, but only this one isn't. So I'm going to choose the, the bottom of this. Again, um, as a shot of surface. With the shot of surface um, defined, we can go to the parting surface. For this part, since it has uh, 450 
a millimeters in uh, length. I'm gonna go with 250 millimeters for the parting line. I'm gonna keep the perpendicular to pull uh, as the mold parameter setting. And this will be our parting surface. Now, on the same plane, which is the top plane, I'm gonna define a new sketch. I'm gonna draw a rectangle, a corner rectangle. And I'm gonna have this, this dimension with uh, 600 for the horizontal value and 450 for uh, for the other one. And I'm just gonna center this, so this will be 450 divided by 2. And for the other will be 600 divided by 2, which will be 300. I will close uh, the sketch. And within mold tools I will go with the following, it will be the uh, uh, tooling split. And we're gonna see that our block size for the top part will have 80 millimeters so we can increase it over here in this case 80 will be fine and at the bottom we're gonna put 30 millimeters and we see that we have the cores and the cavity surface selected so Sardos uh, was able to to have those automatically identified and we're just gonna click on ok and now the software will uh, define our tooling split. And as soon as the tooling split is defined, we're gonna see that now we have multiple bodies. So we're gonna have these three bodies over here and also the surface bodies, which uh, will have both the cavity, the core shot off surface and uh, the parting surface. Now the for the following uh, part, we're gonna need to have our part uh, saved. I'm gonna go over here in uh, mold tools, I'm gonna call it as a case and I will keep the name. With the part save, with on the save, uh, uh, on the solid bodies, I'm gonna right click and go to save bodies. And now I want the software to define each as an individual part and create an assembly using those. So we see that the software will go over here to the save bodies. We have the resulting parts, we can use the auto naming. So we're gonna have the top tooling split one, the bottom will be two, and we're gonna have the parting line, which is our part. And over here at create assembly, we can go with browse. Okay, so I'm gonna type in the same name. So again, case for the assembly, I'm gonna hit on the okay button. And now the software will have those those save. We're gonna see that uh, the template for making the the right parts uh, use a different measure measurement. I'm gonna go with no. We're gonna have to click it three times so we can go. Oh, we don't show it again. But the dimension uh, should remain the same. So I'm using the millimeters uh, system. So sh there shouldn't be any problem. Now I'm gonna rebuild the document. And we're gonna have those uh, defined. So I'm currently still in the part where I save the bodies. But as soon as the software will finish that, if I'm gonna go up to window, I'm gonna go up to, uh, to the other part, this will be that assembly. So over here, if you wanna define uh, interesting animation, you can use the exploded view. I'm gonna select the top uh, the top cavity, have it lifted. I can predefine it, for example, 700 millimeters. After that, I will click on the DOM button. I will go with uh, the design part. So I'm gonna maybe take this up to 350 millimeters. And now, if I wanna have this exploded view animated. I will also change the part for this one. So I'm gonna go over here to the color. I'm gonna make the part green. And I have the, pos I have the possibility to play the animation. So if I'm gonna right click on uh, the assembly, I'm gonna have this uh, animate collapse. And we're gonna see, we're gonna have this animate uh, animation controller, which will do that exploded um, view. Okay, also all my parts are now fixed. If you wanna realign them within mating so you can proceed to the, the following step to define uh, various um, 
elements within the mold you can have those float after that we can move the top part we can move our uh, design part and in this case i will make the bottom tooling split uh, as a fixed element and now i'm gonna center uh, the two components so since the shape of, uh, of this one of, of, of this product is more complex we can easily center it using the uh, axis of the of the pins so i'm gonna go up to uh, show hide i'm gonna activate the temporary axis and with those temporary axes selected i'm gonna define the first mate so i will have this axis that um, should be constant with this one so i'm gonna see that my part will uh, will be positioned over there and now we have that axis defined but since it's only one axis i have the possibility to to drag the part like this so i'm gonna need to constrain it at least by another axis and uh, by a surface so i'm gonna go again to mate and uh, just like a puzzle i'm gonna see that this will be the axis of, of that one and that should be coincident with uh, this axis and now we have the alignment of the part so that means that if i'm gonna try to move the component i will only be able to move it up and down now i can hide the temporary axis and i just need to position the the, the surface uh, of the part to the, to the cavity so i'm going to select the bottom surface that should be coincident with uh, with this surface okay so we're going to put that uh, coincident let's see not all the surface is, uh, is selected since we have this different cutout then I'm gonna choose a different uh, soft, uh, a different surface for example maybe this one from the bottom of a pin uh, that should be with the interior surface like this and that should uh, position our, uh, our part right uh, within the intended location so now if you're gonna go with uh, with a section cut to the part we're gonna see those uh, those pins and if you want to slide this all the way you're gonna see that they are perfectly overlapping okay so for the last part it will be simpler because we only have to to make this block and we know that this surface with that surface should be coincident and we're gonna do the same with these two and now we're just gonna have the uh, to mate the two, two alignment surface so that means that that surface should be mated uh, with this one let's see again that is not uh, perfectly uh, planar so i'm gonna select that surface should be mated with that one and in this case the, the assembly is fully defined so starting from here we can uh, we can go forward doing the exploded view again so one step i'm not going to define any values second step after that maybe i will want to rotate the part to better uh, better highlight it all the way to 360 degrees okay so a full uh, rotation and now if i'm gonna go i can do the animate collapse and we're gonna see that the part uh, will go and we're gonna have the mold closed okay so i hope you find this uh, this video useful i'm gonna do uh, multiple videos regarding mold tools on various case study parts so if you find this useful please consider uh, to, to let me know in the comment section okay thanks for watching see you in the next video